Hi and welcome. Today I will discuss about Android's custom view. In this tutorial I will create a custom view with different shapes like rectangles, squares, circles, images and custom attributes. So let's begin. As you can see I have a complete new Android project and the very first step is to create a new package and let's call it views. Okay, so within this package you can define your own custom views but in this tutorial we will create only one and let's do it by creating a new Java class and let's call it custom view. Okay, so this class will extend view but if you wish you can also extend text view or image view for any other type of functionality but in this tutorial we will extend the raw androids view so we need to include the four constructors and we also will define a init method this will be our initialization method which takes a nullable attribute set so this method must be called from all the constructors as you can see I'm passing here attribute set and here null because we don't have it so why is this necessary? well it's necessary because if we are creating a new instance of this class uh, let's say from our main activity custom view custom view equals with new custom view which takes a context then the very first constructor will be called which also calls the init method but if our custom view is included into a layout file and at layout inflation the other constructors will be called which also calls the init method so for code optimization we, um, we don't need duplicate code so that's the point okay and now let's include the custom view into our layout file so it's very simple custom view okay we need to specify the width and the height let's say match parent with 150 dp okay so every time when we are making changes into our custom view we need to rebuild the whole project okay so here is our custom view we can see the bounds but currently our custom view is transparent so let's change the background color this step is very important because we are overriding the onDraw method which gives us a canvas so the canvas is the thing where we will make all the drawings for our shapes um, to change the background color for our canvas we need to call the draw color which takes an integer value but we have already have some defined uh, color values in the color class okay and let's say red so this red value is an integer value okay so let's see if those changes were applied again we need to rebuild the project because we have we have made modifications in our custom view okay here it is if we change the height of the view let's say 350 dp then we can see that our canvas size also changed okay let's remove the debug line and let's create a shape on the canvas so to draw a shape on the canvas we need to call the draw erect method from the canvas class which takes a rectangle and the paint object so first let's create the rect object new rect the rect object will be used to the set a position and the size for our square meanwhile the paint object uh, will be used to describe the color and the styling for our square so 
we need to define uh, four values. Uh, the first two values to define is the top left and the ending value will be the bottom right for our square. So to do that we need to write those values. Uh, rect left equals with let's say 10, rect top equals with 10, rect right equals with rect left plus 10 and rect bottom equals with rect top plus 10. Okay, so these are pixel positions. This one will represent the position and the size and let's create the paint object and let's define a color for our square and it's very easy we need to call the set color method and we need to pass the color let's say let's use red uh, green okay that will be rect and paint so let's see if those changes were applied again we need to rebuild the project so here is our square it's tiny and it's barely visible um, it's right there so let me explain to you what we have just made on the canvas okay so let's imagine the yellowish layer it's our canvas here the red x represents the top left of our canvas on the x and the y axis which is zero zero and what we have done on the canvas we defined the top left and the bottom right points the top left value is 10 pixel position on the x-axis and 10 position on the y-axis so this is our first point and the second point equals with top left so that will be left plus 10 pixels on the x-axis and another 10 pixels on the y-axis so here is our second point and Android automatically computes the other positions so that will be the top right and the bottom left values so let's change the size of the square because it's currently is a tiny square and it's barely visible so let's convert these values into a constant value and let's call it square size with square size oh there's a typo square okay and all the constants in android and actually in java we defined in the top of the class so private static final int square size let's say 100 pixels okay so let's see if those changes were applied again build the project okay so here is our square okay so this is wrong it's wrong because we are creating new objects in the onDraw method. Android Studio also warns us that we should avoid object allocations during draw layout operations. So what does that mean? Well, at layout inflation or layout size change or screen orientation, let's say from portrait to landscape or the view must be redrawn, then the onDraw method can be called several times. So while this cycle runs, and if we are creating new objects, then we might cause laggerish effect. Or in the worst case, we might block or freeze the whole UI. So we don't want that to happen. So let's remove the object allocation from the onDraw method, and let's declare them as members of the class private rect, m rect square, and private paint m paint square so let's create the objects in the init method new rect and m paint equals with new paint okay let's remove the object allocation and let's change the old objects with the new ones Okay, 
if you're having trouble with the position or the size of your square you might want to use the rect f class instead of rect so the rect f class can hold decimal values float values instead of integer values okay and the second thing is that we want to enable anti-aliasing on the on the paint object uh, and to do that we need to pass a flag to the paints constructor so what does these flags makes well let me explain to you here we can see the difference between an allies and an anti-allies technique so look at the difference between the left and the right font and here between the lines and the circles as you can see the left one is much more pixelated so the right font and shapes are much more user friendly than the left one so you make sure you pass the anti-allies flag into your paint object okay so let's check if this app works so if you have an emulator or an android device boot it up and run the application okay so the app works on a genymotion emulator now let's add some functionality and some changes for our square um, let's change the top left value the starting point of the square uh, let's change the size of the square and let's add a button to the layout and if we are pressing that button let's change the squares color actually let's add a swap method uh, so if we are pressing the button and the square size is green then it should be red but if it's red then it should be green okay to do that uh, first of all let's change the squares position and size so the top left value should be 50 with 50 and the square size let's say 200 okay and remove the set color from the on draw method and move it in the init method okay now let's add the button okay create an id for the custom view let's say custom view okay and add a button to the layout with wrap content wrap content a text um, swap color I don't know okay and an ID for our button so let's say ID button swap color okay and we need to move the button below the custom view and if and we are using relative layout so that should be be layout below custom view okay let's build a project okay the square size and position position has changed now let's add some reference to the button and for the custom view remove the new initialization of the custom view and let's declare a new member of the class custom view m custom view okay and this custom view must be referenced by find view by id and the id of the class which is custom view right here okay now let's add a on click listener for the button so find view by id her id button is swap set on click listener a new interface new view that on click listener we need to override the on click method okay um let's create a new method in the custom view and let's call it swap color okay which will change the color of the square so how we can do that 
Mm. We need to change the paint, uh, the paint squares object color. So to do that, set color. We need to call the set color, and if our paint square get color equals with color green, then the co new color should be red. Otherwise, it should be green. Okay, so this method must be called from uh, the on click. So on custom view, swap color. Okay, hit run and let's see if this was applied. Okay, so here is our layout with the square and the button. And if I press this button, the square color should change. Well, I'm pressing the button, but it's not working. So why is this? It's because the onDraw method doesn't get called. And why is this? Well, the onDraw method can be called several times during layout, inflation or any other uh, modifications in the class. But uh, here we are just setting the color for our paint object. So we cannot call the onDraw method uh, like this, I don't know, to create a bitmap cache or create a new canvas. Instead of this, we have two possibilities. We have the invalidate method and we have the post invalidate method. So the difference between those methods is that invalidate runs synchronously. And that means if uh, after calling the invalidate method, right after that, the on draw method gets called. But if uh, we are calling the post invalidate method, we are notifying the custom view that it should redraw itself when it can. So this one might block the UI if you're having a very complex UI, this one won't block your UI. So the recommended way is to call the post invalidate instead of invalidate. Okay, now let's run the app and let's see if this works. Okay, so here's layout, let's check it out. Yep, it's working. All right, guys, this is the ending of part one of series Android's custom view. You can download the whole project. Uh, you can find the links in the description. If you encountered problems in your code, uh, please let me know by leaving a comment. Um, this is my very first upload to YouTube. So if you have some suggestions or new ideas, uh, please let me know that as well by leaving a comment. Thanks for watching.